In this video, we are going to discuss a mech which is often overlooked in Battletech, but is strangely known by a fairly large volume of people. One of the lighter mechs in the setting, and one which often can struggle to deliver what its role promised, both in its inception and reimagining, this battle mech has underwhelmed mech warriors for almost 700 years in setting. Though, to be clear, there are those who perhaps see a devilishly capable mech beneath the derision and mockery heaped upon it. So, let us begin to look at this pest of the highest quality, Earthworks Incorporated's Flea. A light mech weighing in at 20 tons, the Flea has a fascinating origin, as it's much more remarkable than one might imagine. Originally designed and developed by Earthworks for the Free Worlds League in 2475, the battle mech, then known as the Trooper, would take up a recon role within the Free Worlds League military. This was short-lived for the Trooper, however, as the battle mech was plagued with a series of internal flaws and poor design decisions. This normally would have resulted in the end of development and support for such a battle mech, but Earthworks was unwilling to give up on this design, resulting in them recrafting the battle mech and dropping the trooper designation, instead redubbing it to the name it is now most certainly more known by, the Flea. After this decades-long debacle, the mech would see service within the Free Worlds League and would even bleed into other states. This prolific vehicle would then go on to serve in these states until the fall of the Star League. Funnily enough, it was never particularly enjoyed by pilots, even after its flaws were addressed. In general, the mech warriors assigned to it found it poorly adjusted to pilot. Built to be inexpensive, this 20-ton mech proved to be more than useful at suppressing dissidents, and was popular due to its low price tag. Much to the horror of the houses, those who purchased it, however, these qualities proved to be less useful once a state of total war emerged during the Succession Wars. Despite being able to be mass-produced in enormous numbers, even during this time of heavy losses and poor industry output, it proved so ineffectual and had so much of an abysmal attrition rate that the flea's production was reduced and then ceased altogether. While most Star League designs slowly came to an end due to a lack of parts, or due to a loss of technology, the Flea's role in the Inner Sphere ended for centuries, due to it just being substandard. While Earthworks may have profited immensely off this design for hundreds of years, it appears the pilots and commanders of these machines did not. With the complete shutdown of support for the Flea, it would slowly but surely vanish from the Inner Sphere, until the arrival of the Wolf's Dragoons. The Dragoons, a scout force sent to the Inner Sphere on behalf of the clans which worked as mercenaries across the Inner Sphere, would reintroduce the design to the Inner Sphere in the 31st century. Eventually, Earthworks would begin to produce new fleet battle mechs for this mercenary unit, and eventually other clients as well bringing it back into the fold of the Inner Sphere. These reborn mechs were found to be useful as lightweight, inexpensive battle mechs for dealing with insurgencies, light vehicle elements, and infantry, eventually. It can perform as a scout as well, but most variants don't excel at this particular function. Built in the Age of War originally, the Trooper, which would then evolve into the Flea, was plagued with problems. After 25 years of further development on behalf of Earthworks, it would become a workable design, and then was dubbed the FLE-4 Flea, which would see the most service inside of the Free Worlds League, the home base for its production. Built to be, frankly, cheap, it performs as well as one might expect for a battle mech on a budget. It performed poorly once Real Wars emerged, despite its ability to be mass-produced, which appears to be a damning indictment on the design as a whole. In its original configuration, it comes with a standard internal structure, cockpit, and gyro. 
For the advanced rules, standard flea variants have the misfortune of having the hard-to-pilot trait, due to its very poor handling. This trait confers a negative penalty to all of the piloting roles that the flea may be forced to take. Another trait that it has is the no arms quirk, which unfortunately can be combined with its hard to pilot trait should it fall over. This will make it incredibly difficult for the flea to ever find its footing again should it lose its balance. The final quirk that it possesses is its saving grace, at least in this respect, which is the easy to maintain perk. This does signify that this relatively poor handling mech can at least look forward to being cheap to keep in operation. The FLE-4 was born in an era of warfare where speed was not as extreme. Mechs such as the Mercury and Locust, which are speedy even by modern standards in Battletech at least, were the extreme of what seemed possible for mech movement during this era. The Flea, at 20 tons, was given a similar overall movement and output to the Wasp or Stinger, which was the norm for the time. To achieve this, the Flea has a 4-ton GM-120 Fusion Standard Engine, which can deliver a maximum speed of 97 km per hour, or 9 movement points in the tabletop game. This is, unfortunately for the FLE-4, the average speed of most light assets in this time, and by the later days of the Star League, this would not be very impressive at all. For a design like the Flea, as you will see in the rest of this video, given its other compromises, it really needed a larger engine. Unsurprisingly, the Flea only has the base 10 heatsinks in its design. Normally, this isn't a problem, but in this case for the Flea, it can't actually fire all of its weapons without potentially overheating. Though it won't overheat so much in a single turn that it would suffer severely for it, unless it runs and Alpha strikes all of its weapons. For a 20-ton mech, the FLE-4 is heavily armed. At the center of its design, able to fire at medium ranges and deliver heavy strikes for its era, the Flea has a Martell large laser mounted in its right arm. To back this up at very short ranges is a pair of Martell small lasers in the left arm. Finally, in its center torso, but facing towards the rear unfortunately, it has a single Olympian flamethrower. For a 20-ton mech, this is quite heavily armed but sadly, not so much that it can reasonably destroy mech opposition that it faces. Barring its rear-facing flamer as well, it's not particularly well suited towards destroying infantry, such as later models might be. As a result, the flea engages tanks, light armored vehicles, and mechs quite commonly. This is a problem for it overall as even its peers in the 20-ton space have a major advantage over it in several respects, either in movement or have significantly better piloting quirks, or have actual protection. The claim that the Flea is an armored combat vehicle might border on falsehood. This is the premier reason it went out of production. It is a fact, beyond its poor handling, that this is often considered to be a death trap of a mech. The reason for that is for defense, the flea is blessed with a shockingly substandard two tons of standard plating, giving it a total of 32 points of armor. To say that this is inadequate would be a criminal underestimation, as it is literally half as protected as a locust. With this limited durability, the flea will shatter under incoming fire. 11 damage to its center torso, which is the equivalent of being struck by two medium lasers and a machine gun, will catastrophically destroy the mech beyond repair. A single PPC strike to the center torso will leave a single point of internal structure left behind. A single large laser hit will destroy its side torsos, or its limbs, without any difficulty. While some of this is due to it being 20 tons, the Locust has twice the overall armor, meaning it can survive a Gauss rifle shot to the center torso and potentially make an escape from the battlefield. 
By contrast, the flea would explode into ruin from such a strike. The FLE-4 is an upgrade over its trooper predecessor, but it is still a death trap in many meaningful regards. This battle mech is by no means survivable in almost any sense of the word, and often cannot keep up with mechs in its own weight class, or in its own stated role, which is recon. The only true advantage it has is that its large laser can reach out to targets further than some of its contemporaries, but it's not fast enough to use this advantage to its fullest ability, and as soon as it's caught, and it likely will be, it is very much likely to face annihilation. Pilots leave letters to their loved ones when they are assigned to this mech, even in training exercises, I'm sure. There's a reason for this. Often the Free Worlds League is credited with innovative and strong designs or variants. The flea is most certainly not among them, at least in its original forms. With the Wolfstragoons appearing in the Inner Sphere, the design would be resurrected after years of only appearing in the most obscure ways. The Flea's return would be the beginning of a new era, or it would become a mighty presence on the battlefield, most assuredly. This previous statement is untrue, but we will begin to investigate several of the variants from the ages beyond the Star League and the Succession Wars era. For whatever reason, the Wolfstragoons appeared to love the Flea, and continued to purchase them after the Fourth Succession War, and one of the variants they would acquire was the FLE-17. Earthworks would, after the discovery of the Hell Memory Core, begin to produce these in some numbers, and would begin the process of upgrading them with recovered technologies as well. The most prominent of these would be the FLE-17, which was depicted in Technical Readout 3050. It utilizes several pieces of lost tech to try to enhance the design. First, it uses endo steel for its internal structure to save one ton on space, something which is vital in 20 ton designs, as every ton does indeed count. It utilizes a mask, which it can use to increase its speed temporarily, though should it fail to do so, will result in the gyro on board being damaged. Given its poor handling, this is, in essence, a death sentence for the flea, as it will be forced to make a piloting roll with extreme difficulty, so it should only be activated under severe duress. It has three tons of armor, making it almost survivable, though it will still be felled more easily than a locust. It is much more heavily armed, supporting twin Martel medium pulse lasers with one in each arm, and a flamer mounted in the front making it more dangerous to infantry units and vehicles. These pulse lasers are accurate and hit hard, but are short-ranged, meaning the flea must close with its targets to engage them. Finally, it has two rear-facing small lasers. While this most certainly is an upgrade over the FLE-4, the 17 really is a coffin in the same way. It is a deeply flawed design which requires the flea to engage targets at 180 meters or less, and it does not have enough plating to survive against almost any foe. While it is better against infantry, it is not so much so that it would do a better job than a locust, or most other reasonable alternatives. An alternative to the 17, the 16 would be introduced more recently in real-life publications and is an alternative to the FLE-17 using lower tech, but trying to be more survivable. It is another Wolfstragoon-centric model. This design also comes from the late Succession Wars through to Clan Invasion. It has twin medium lasers and a flamer, as well as three tons of armor. The big difference is, it is amazingly fast, installing a GM-180 Fusion Standard Engine giving it a maximum speed of 151 kilometers per hour, or 14 movement points in the tabletop game. This does have the speed to survive, potentially on the battlefield, and it can offset some of its overt armor problems as a result. It's not dependent on a mask either, and has a better range than the 17, but at the cost of accuracy. 
a design which appeared in the Chaos March, and one which Earthworks claims to have no knowledge of, though this is in some doubt, is a machine seemingly designed to commit crimes against humanity on the battlefield, and in urban areas, though it would never be seen again after 3068. This model is, in fact, dubbed the Fire Ant. It has very little armor and no major weapons, but packs six machine guns as well as three flamethrowers. Often, this is even the variant most people think of when they think of the flea itself. It is a mech designed for spiteful reprisals on protesting or rioting civilians, as well as a terror weapon against militias or enemy infantry formations. Poorly armored and moving an average speed, its sole role on any battlefield is to end human lives which are not given the protection of an armored vehicle or battle mech. It is a despised design by many vehicles or infantry commanders, and enemy mechs will destroy it, when possible, in order to remove this kind of plague from the universe. It is no wonder they all vanished. Those that were not rebuilt into another form were simply destroyed on the battlefield. The flea is a miserable excuse for a battle mech. Poor handling, poor armor, almost universally, and a poor reputation follow it across the universe. Most of its configurations are laughable death traps, though there is one shining example among all of them, namely the FLE-16, though in reality this is just a mildly tweaked locust, but missing the locust's overall better quirks and logistical capabilities. It is an infamous mech due to the Fire Ant variant, as well as the FLE-19, a mech which is similar to it and often seen in the periphery. The Flea's reputation is either that of an underperforming scout or death trap, an obscure locust, or a machine which is reviled for its explicit design to slaughter human beings in inhumane ways. Its benefit is that it is simply inexpensive. It's no wonder that the houses stopped building these. It's also clearly one of the worst results of the clan invasion happening. If the Wolf's Dragoons never brought this thing back into the Inner Sphere, there would be many more mech warriors who weren't given a death sentence by piloting it. Or many more civilians and infantry who weren't killed by its barbarity. It is a tragedy generating machine for all involved with it. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I do updates very frequently and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Also, a huge thank you to all the YouTube members for this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take an extra step in supporting the content on this channel and I can't thank you enough. Because this content is only made possible because of viewers like you. With that, I will see you all in the comments section below.